In this video, we're going to add some data to our geo database and our peer schools analysis data set, our feature data set. First, I need to work with this TIFF that we got from the USGS. Add that, and then we need to export it, which may sound interesting, but it fixes it for us. In this case, we'll need to change the format to a grid and we're going to give it a new name NLCD grid double check the data folder looks like the data folder is right I don't need it in my real data folder yet I just want it in raw data I'm going to say add NLCD underscore grid and it's a format grid I'll say save and hope that it works does say not responding but I'm going to give it some time to resolve itself and if you let it go long enough uh, you did notice that this said not responding for a while but um, I let it go, go for quite a while I actually walked away from the computer I get this little pop-up yes I do want to add it to the map I'm now going to project the NLCD grid by going to our catalog as we've done in the past raster project raster and here I have NLCD grid if this Albers conic equal area does not show up then you have an issue since mine does come up I'm good to go at this point I'm going to send the output to my geo database data lab 3 into my geo database so I have to click on it and then say save uh, I guess I have to tell it what name to give it I'm going to name it Pierce impervious projected click save geographic transformation that's the one we always use for some reason it's not on top there's Washington Oregon notice I didn't have to put in Washington State Plain because we set our geoprocessing earlier because this is categorical data it is either impervious or not impervious nearest is a good choice and we're not going to alter our cell size for this function as we project the raster. I'm going to say OK. Functions. Again, I'm pausing while it completes. Right now we're at 0%. And the elapsed time on that looks to be about 5 minutes. Notice this datum conflict between map and output. I'm going to close this and then look at the new layer go to properties source and scroll down NAD 83 Harn south state plane that looks all good let me go to the map properties see that's equals area because the first grid that we put in was Albers equal area so that is a fine thing that that's okay what it showed us but it's good to double check I'll just clear this apply and there's no issue and as a direction state I'm going to remove the grid and I'm going to remove the TIFF from the map the next step is to import items into our feature data set I'm going to go to lab 3 go to my geo database should notice that there is Pierce impervious projected within the geo database there's nothing in our data set but I'm going to add it right now import multiple and the reason I'm choosing multiple is I have three data sets that I want to add here's my raw data lab 3 I'm going to choose my base map my school grounds and my data from the census that I provided to you I'm going to say add 
it is going to the right place. Just want to double check. Add. It's set to go. It was right. I just double checked. I'm going to say OK and pause while it continues. That took about a minute and a half. We went to close. And following the directions, I'm going to rename it. Rename them by clicking rename, changing this to Pierce base map changing the census data to whoop, I better go slow it was re, it was sorting rename this is the UAUC NAT data I'll make it exactly like the directions and then I'm going to click school grounds and wait and then school grounds it's very close but to keep things exact just so we're all on the same page I'm gonna rename it with school grounds with an underscore and now I've got it looking exactly like the directions at this point you should have your directory set up don't worry about lab 0 don't worry about lab 4 but within your directory of labs you must have a lab 3 user ID lab 3 data lab L3 with a lab 3 geo database a feature data set three feature classes within it one raster within your geo database because these are in the same line that means that the feature data set and the geo and the raster are in the geo database and then of course there's a maps folder and our raw data that's down here you don't need to expand that but look look at how much data space we're saving if I right click on raw and pull this up there are 754 megabytes close to a gigabyte of savings in this by using the raw data folder and that's where we end up for this step